I took a little vacation with a buddy of mine down to Redondo Beach, California. I was throwing the frisbee with a buddy of mine. And as I jumped the wave to retrieve the frisbee, the wave hit my legs, it jackknifed my body, and it just slammed me head first into the ocean floor. And it snapped my neck, which instantly paralyzed me from the, from the, the neck down. Uh, ambulance came and took me off to UCLA Harborview. I spent two weeks there, one week in ICU, and a week recovering after my surgery to repair my damaged spine. Fast forward four years later, I saw an advertisement for a wheelchair tennis clinic. Let's see what disabled sports are like. I hit my first ball in a wheelchair, and when I was at that camp, couldn't believe how fun it was. What has it given you playing wheelchair tennis? I've been able to represent the country multiple times, winning every U.S. Open Grand Slam doubles that I've ever competed in, uh, having three singles Grand Slam titles here, three Australian Opens, as well as I think seven or eight Grand Slam Australian Open doubles Grand Slams. I've been to the Paralympics four times, I've won eight Paralympic medals. I, I've just been able to do a lot more uh, than I would have ever thought possible even with, with my type of disability. You, t you talked about being at the at, at the Paralympics and, and representing your country, but can you just talk a little bit more about just inside, like what that's like to be able to represent your country? When you get that first opportunity to represent your country, it's, it's surreal. I had no idea what it went to go to the Paralympics and how grandiose it really is and how just on par with, with, the with the Olympics, that the Paralympics are. You walk out and there's 110,000 people in the stadium and you don't expect that. When you play a sport and when you can show people what kind of athlete you are, that it almost breaks down a barrier, that it, that it sort of reminds everybody how much we have in common. I hope they don't focus on the wheelchair uh, itself. I think at first you, you are very aware of the wheelchair and, and in my case the way I tape the rack into my hand. Um, and so I think, I think people are very aware of that at first. I think if you sit and watch a match long enough, you, you start to be a tennis fan and you just pick up on the tennis tactics and the strategy. When someone introduces you and, you, and they say, David's an elite athlete, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel great to be, be called an elite athlete. You know, I, I train hard, I, I take this sport as serious as I can. I want to be seen on the same light as my able-bodied counterparts. And then I've been able to break some barriers down, you know, and break some stereotypes that people might have of a quadriplegic, how does a quadriplegic play wheelchair tennis? To be able to break some of those barriers and stereotypes down and show that anything is possible and that you can do that, it's it's a huge accomplishment and a very something I'm very uh, honored to be part of. I just want to make sure that what I'm leaving behind uh, for the next generation is going to impact them positively and that they have something to look forward to themselves.